Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, my brother and sister of this world. I bring you greetings from Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah. Today, I'm going to be preaching on the topic, constructive anger and destructive anger. Hallelujah. Constructive anger and destructive anger. Today, I'm going to be going into the book of Matthew chapter 21, verses 12 and 13. Matthew 21, verse 12 and 13. Verse 12, I read. Jesus entered the temple and began to drive out all people buying and selling animals for sacrifice. He knocked over the table of the money exchangers and the chairs of those selling doves. Verse 13. He said to them, The scripture declared, My temple will be called the house of prayer, but you have turned it into the den of thieves. Hallelujah. So you see, Jesus Christ went into the temple. When he got into the temple, he saw people, you know, they were just selling animals, you know, for, for sacrifice, you know, money exchange, they're exchanging money, foreign currencies, and they turned God's house into the den of thieves. They were just doing all, and he was so angry. He started whipping, the, whipping them, and he turned over the, the money exchange table, and he started, oh, he was moving. My goodness, the hustle prayer, according to Habakkuk two twenty, that remember you are in God's temple. Let all the earth keep silent because when you know where money is changed and people send animal, they just causing noise. And why the Bible says that that should be the the place of prayers, of confession, interceding to God, praying to Him. But instead, they turn into the den of thieves. So Jesus calls you a constructive anger. He destroyed everything and he made that temple was unique in the eyes of God. My people, let me tell you today. My life, I've been going through all these things. But what the Bible says for the book of James, chapter 1, verses 19, all, not one of me, all every pastors in the world, or any one that God is trying to use, James chapter 1, verse 19. Let me, let me read it for you. I can call it right now. Be slow to speak, slow to anger, and quick to listen. But let me read it. Hallelujah. For proof. And I read. Understand this. James chapter 1 verse 19. Understand this. My dear brothers and sisters. You must all be quick to listen. Slow to speak. And slow to anger. Him anger does not produce righteousness. Let me read it one more time. You know, verse 20. Him anger that does not produce righteousness God desire. Hallelujah. So, you see, many men, uh, men and women of God today or people who God is using there is the one that you have to implement. There is the one that you have to live by and God is going to use you. Because sometimes we quick, quick to talk. But the Bible said we should be, let me read it one, let me, let me, let me, let me go and emphasize on it one more time. Quick to listen to God. Slow to speak. And slow to anger. Quick to listen to God. 
slow to speak and slow to anger. When something happened in a judgment, whatever you see, tonight just start talking. Calm down. Ask God what you should do. And slow to anger. Let me give an illustration. In the church, a couple of years back, there was a pregnant woman after church we were renting from an individual who were renting his building. So after we have to pack the chairs. So there was a lady, she was pregnant, and she was, if you see her, it's almost like she was getting ready to pop. So, and this other lady standing up, she finally putting her back over her shoulder, and we all the work and she said that she's a member of the church. So because I told her, I said, oh, you you standing right there, this lady with a big stomach. And she's in the moving the chair and you not do anything. That lady stopped coming to church. I call her, call her. She started giving a lot of excuses. From there, she started coming to stop coming to church. You see what I'm talking about? Yeah, because I get a a constructive criticism that oh, this lady pregnant and you you're not pregnant, and she moving the chair. Why 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 you can't come and help? She stopped coming to church, but she forget the nose that according to whatever I you should think I did wrong. The Bible says that from the book of you know Ephesians chapter one, verses twenty six and twenty seven. Do not let, get angry, but do not sin and let your anger to lead you to destruction. We just read it not too long, but let me, let, let, let me go ahead, let me go ahead. We just read James chapter 1, verses 20. Human anger does not produce righteousness of God's desire. Your human anger, you know, you keeping up bitterness against the pastor or whatsoever members in the church or member that you are friends or family member that you know, you keeping anger against them. For some time, the person do not even know. When the person talk to you, the person call you and talk to you, you you snub them up. You 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 sometimes you you see them in the street, you get get your your fingers like this. You know what? Let me give you. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 26 and 27. Let me read it. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 26 and 27. Let me read. 26. Ephesians 4, verse 26. And and do not sin by letting anger control you. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. Do not let sins, do not let your anger, your anger to lead you into sin. And do not let the sun go down with your anger. It means that whatever you, somebody did to you or whatever, you're going to rec actually reconcile within that same day or minute or second. You're reconciled. Do not let the sun go down with your anger. If you cry to God, no, right now, when you, that, you keep in that anger against that person, the devil is going to use you. The devil is going to manipulate you. You are the, the child of the devil. But you have to reconcile with that person. Do not let the sun go down because that anger will lead you into sin. And what the Bible just said, Ephesians 4 verse 20 says, Do not let your anger lead you into sin. Don't let the source of go down. Reconcile with that person, whether the person was right or wrong. Reconcile for the sake of Christ. Verse 27. Let me read 27. Ephesians 4 27. For anger gave foothold to the devil. Ho! Loophole. Anger. Get foothold 
to the devil. The devil can come to Olaza and do many destruction in your life. Brothers and sisters, if you are sleeping, wake up. Anger gave a full hold to the devil, a loophole to the devil in your family, in your life, whatever. The devil is going to use you. And let me let you know right now. Long, long time ago, I have a fiance, and she was into the teeth of God. And at that time, I was not, I was not into the teeth of God. But I used to serve God a long time ago into the Episcopal, you know, she came the Episcopal Church. But then uh, after war, you know, I just started backsliding and I just started, you know, and I just, you know, stopped going to church. So there's my fiance, she was going to church, you deep not going to church. So one day, it looked like she just invited me to go to her church. So I went to her church and the pastors just started preaching. Jeez. He preached, 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 and he, he just put his finger to the back and said, You there, if you don't stop smoking, you will die and go to hell. You gotta stop. Oh my God. It's like he was printing to me. It's like if my fiance went and told him everything, but she did not. So after church, I never knew. I never knew after church, you know, we were going close. We got, at that time, we were renting from the Y and C. So we left from the Y, me and I was going, we were almost like crying here in the opposite, in the, right in front of the crying cinema. So I started getting angry. I started talking to her. You know, we have started having, you know, a word of exchange, you know, changing words. I said, you know what? I'm not going to go to that church. So right away, God just let the pastor, he was passing by, and he said, no. She never told me nothing about you. She never. I would just preach it in general. Probably maybe I would point my finger. I would not point my finger to you. I would just point my finger on the back. And the Holy Spirit just leave me to say that. Oh God, it's almost like somebody there with in you know, a cold water on me. I was so quiet. I went home. That's how I became member of that church and i began to mobile i started growing up evangelizing and i started loving it you know going to home and talking to, about jesus christ that's how it was a constructive preaching my anger was destructive but later on it turned around to be constructive because whatever the pastor was saying it was a very constructive preaching Nobody told him nothing, my man. Then right now, I, you know, I, I preach and I started preaching and some people in the church, homosexual, they stop going to church. They stop going to church. But they forget to know, I just told you not too long about what happened to me. When the pastor preached about me, I was smoking, I was doing all that. Yeah. I make a change. But you there, you know from the book of, in a Romans chapter 1, verses 26 and 27, a man, God made a man for a woman, a woman for the, uh, 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 a man for a woman, a woman for a man. Not woman to woman, man to man. That what Romans chapter 1, verse 26 and 27 said. Oh, there's such a desire that God has given a man, or such a desire, they turn around in the sin for the opposite. This, the sexual desire that God has given to a woman, they turn the around and start going up and say, woman with woman, man with man. So when you go tell them, they say, oh, that, oh that. no, they want is Romans chapter 1, verse 26 and 27. So when I preach on that and you stop going to church and you don't want, you are, you are, that is a loophole for the devil to use you in your life. You got to turn around, you know, for the day of creation that God made man for woman, woman for man, not man for man. Hallelujah. When God poured Adam to sleep and took his rest and made woman, he never poured, he, there was not man he produced. He, after God poured Adam to sleep, he produced a woman, man for a woman, woman for a man. So when you preach on that, 
Then people start coming to church. You can start coming to church as long as you start coming to church. But you going to face God. That is a destructive anger against the pastor right there. Destructive anger against the pastor right there. A constructive anger is you got to continue to go to church and repent of what you are doing. That ain't going to be constructive. You still go in and listen to the word of God and start making a change. Hallelujah. My brother and sister, yeah, let me tell you today. Before somebody come and come tell you about my life, I used to womanize. Oh, I used to drink. I used to smoke. I was put in jail for DUI. Because certain circumstances that were going on in my life. I, I know I put aside God. But not knowing that you can't put aside God. You got to keep God in your life. You got to be prayerful for you not to fall into temptation. I did all that. But look at me today. I will tell you, if you take God all of my life right now, I am nothing useless, worthless. But I encourage you, whatever the circumstances may be today, you have to take it. You have to take that constructive criticism. And you, know, you, you have to take that constructive, you know, you know, criticism and, and make it a, and make yourself to be better. That's what I did. That's constructive criticism my pastor gave me. You are preaching, and the Holy Spirit lead him to tell me, so, oh, if you start smoking, you're going to die and go to hell. He was preaching a constructive preaching. Not something that somebody told him. The Holy Spirit will get led in the preaching. And today, look at me. Hallelujah. And remember, there is the one that when you preach on today, there is the present day life right now. The cell phone. The cell phone is dominating, taking over the church. When you go in God's temple, according to Habakkuk 2 20, Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 20. Remember the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the eyes keep silent. There's somebody in the vibration when you listen to the ringer tune. You listen to the color tune. There's somebody that they, they cut your cell phone or in shower. Call it off and serve the Lord. Cut your cell phone off and serve the Lord. Because it's a distraction right there. Cut it off. Do not keep it on fabric. I say, cut your cell phone off and worship and serve the Lord. There's some people have their dad today. They're going to be there sitting on the sitting there all the way to the back. They're there watching the time, looking at the time. On me. No, if you want to go to work or whatever you want to go to do, go and do it. If you say you want to serve the Lord, you want to worship the Lord, worship me in truth and in spirit with all your soul, with all your heart, with all your mind, and with all your strength. Worship the Lord. Don't be checking on your time. My brother and sister, as the Holy Spirit lead, I will come back again. Remember, Christ loves you, and I love you too. In Jesus' mighty name, and I'll be back again. Amen.